Hey, Newbie Dan here, and this is a Newbie Tooltip about hole saws. Newbie Tooltips are videos that highlight specific tools or techniques. They're not intended to be in-depth reviews or tutorials, and they're not sponsored by anyone. Hole saws are useful when you need to cut large holes, usually an inch or more, all the way through wood. Some hole saws can also cut metal, but I'm only covering wood in this video. Forstner bits are also useful for drilling large holes. For more information, see my Newbie Tooltip video on them. They're called hole saws instead of hole bits, and you can see why in this picture. They have teeth like a saw blade. They actually saw a circle out of the wood, instead of just obliterating the entire hole like normal drill bits do. You can throw the circle away, or you can use it for making things like knobs. In fact, I use hole saws to make knobs all the time. You use hole saws with a mandrel, also known as an arbor. Here's one example. This is the shank. This part with the threads on it is called the collar. This is the pilot bit. And this is the set screw for adjusting or removing the pilot bit. The hole saw screws onto the collar, and the shank goes into the drill. The pointy end goes in the wood. I should point out that there's other types of hole saws and mandrels, but I'm limiting this video to the types of hole saws with threaded holes. They're the ones I have the most experience with. Mandrels come with different sized shanks, so make sure you don't get a shank too large for your drill's chuck. Hole saws smaller than one and a quarter inches in diameter have a smaller threaded hole than saws with diameters of one and a quarter inches or larger. This particular mandrel is sized for the smaller saws, so it has an adapter that screws onto the collar for the larger size saws. I actually use a different mandrel than this, but I'll explain that later on in the video. Hole saws come in varying heights. Because of this, the pilot bit's height can be adjusted. There's one or more set screws that you loosen, then raise or lower the pilot bit, and tighten it back down. Or you can even replace the pilot bit if you need to. If the pilot bit is too long for the saw, it's not a big deal, as long as you don't let the pilot bit drill through something important. Obviously, if the pilot bit is so short that it doesn't reach past the hole saw, then you need to raise it. But you always want it to be at least a half inch or more above the edge of the hole saw, for reasons I'll explain later. For me, I set it to one height, and it works for all my hole saws. I just pay attention to where the pilot bit is going to end up. You can buy a set of hole saws, or you can buy individual saws as you need them. Buying saws individually is more expensive than buying a set. However, chances are good that even if you buy a set, you'll still end up needing a size that didn't come in the set. So it's kind of a gamble either way. Hole saws with threaded holes made by different manufacturers are interchangeable. At least that's been my experience here in the U.S. I'm going to show you how to use hole saws with both handheld drills and drill presses. I used hole saws with handheld drills for years. I have a drill press now, and I prefer to use hole saws with it, but handheld drills are fine as long as you pay attention to a few safety tips, and sometimes they're your only choice, like when you need to drill a hole in a cabinet or something similar. When you use a hole saw, either with a drill press or a handheld drill, I recommend drilling partway through from one side, then flipping your stock over and finishing the hole from the other side. I didn't invent this method, I just agree with it. For simplicity's sake, I'm calling this the two-sided method, and I'll explain the details later, but just keep this in mind as we go along. Sometimes you're drilling in a place that doesn't allow you to drill from both sides. So, obviously, if you can't, don't. But if you can, do. Always clamp down your stock, preferably with two clamps if possible. At least when you can use clamps. You can use a drill press vise, but even then, clamp the vise down. Be careful not to cut into the vise. The easiest thing to do is clamp the stock so it overhangs the edge of your workbench. That way you won't accidentally cut through anything important, unless you get a body part in the way. Don't do that. I use a drill press vise whenever I can. It works great, as long as you remember to stop before cutting into the vise. If you use a two-sided method, this shouldn't be a problem as long as you're paying attention. And this is what happens when you're not paying attention. Also, check to see if the pilot bit will end up extending past the bottom of the vise, and if it does, use a backing board or adjust the height of the pilot bit. If your drill press's table swings around, you may be able to clamp the stock so it overhangs the table and drill that way. If none of these options work for you, then clamp or screw the stock to a backing board. 
Actually, you may need more than one backing board depending on the height of the pilot bit. Lastly, make sure your drill press is set to the recommended speed, or lower, for the saw you're using. Here's some safety tips when using hole saws with handheld drills. As I mentioned earlier, whenever possible, always clamp down your stock. Use two clamps to be safe whenever you can. Always keep two hands on the drill. It's fairly common for the saw to get stuck in the wood, and when it does, it can rip the drill right out of your hand, and it's easy to hurt your wrist. Here's one I totally forgot, because all I've been using lately is a drill press, and it's much more forgiving. As the teeth of the saw approach the surface of the wood, let the teeth just barely graze the surface of the wood. Let them gradually start a cut. Once they get a groove going, then you can gradually apply more pressure. Do not just jam the teeth down into the wood right off the bat. Horrible idea. Want to know how I know? Oh yeah, that was fun. Let's see how close I came to becoming a soprano. Alright, not that close, but too close for comfort, that's for sure. Can you imagine what would have happened if the board had been longer? Ah! So what happened? First, I only used one clamp. Two clamps may have prevented this. At least I used two hands so I didn't lose the drill or hurt my wrist. Second, this saw is way too dull and I should have replaced it. Third, and this is the biggie, I leaned down into it right from the start. I jammed dull teeth spinning rapidly down into hard Baltic birch plywood. <laughs> and I almost paid the price. But at least I got some good video, right? So go back and reread the three safety tips I just mentioned. Then, go out and do as I said, not as I just did. Okay, let's move on to not burning down the house. Hole saws can produce a lot of friction, and you need to follow a few safety tips to make sure you don't burn the wood or the saw. Here's an example of what happens if you don't follow these tips. Gotta love the smoke. And the ashes. And burned wood and burned saw. I love the smell of burning wood in the morning. So how do we prevent this? With a handheld drill, start and stop a lot. Pull the saw out of the wood occasionally. These things help keep the temperature down. With a drill press, back out a lot. Depending on your drill press, you may find the drill actually stopping sometimes. That just means you need to be more patient and don't rush it. In either case, if you smell something burning or see burn marks, you're letting the saw get too hot, so slow down and take more time. And if your wife comes out into the garage and asks you what you're burning, you're definitely doing it wrong. Now let's talk about the two-sided method. As I mentioned before, drill partway through from one side, then flip it over and finish from the other side. You can use the hole that the pilot bit creates to align the saw. This is why I said the pilot bit should extend at least a half inch, if not more, past the teeth of the hole saw, so it pokes a hole through the stock, even though you've only drilled partway through. There's a couple of reasons to use the two-sided method. For one, if you try and cut the entire hole from one side, you risk tearing out the back unless you're clamped to a backing board. But even if you are clamped to a backing board, there's another reason to use the two-sided method. It's a lot easier to get the centerpiece out of the saw when you're done drilling. And I mean a lot easier. Whether you're using a handheld drill or a drill press, getting the centerpiece out of the hole saw is basically the same. In both cases, I recommend leaving the saw in the drill. It's easier than trying to hold it and remove the centerpiece at the same time. Be careful because both the saw and the wood can be hot. Assuming you use the two-sided method, half of the centerpiece should be below the teeth of the saw, and lots of times you can just pull it off or unscrew it. If it won't come out that way, stick a screwdriver in one of the slots in the saw and use the screwdriver like a lever to get the piece out. You may have to work from one side, then the other, slowly inching the centerpiece out a little at a time. The slots are actually designed partly for this purpose. Some are designed better than others for it. If you didn't use the two-sided method, it may be next to impossible to get the centerpiece out no matter what you try. In that case, try waiting until everything cools down and see if that helps. 
If it doesn't, there's actually some YouTube videos that show tricks for getting the centerpiece out of the saw. Sometimes a hole saw gets stuck to the collar, making it difficult, if not impossible, to remove. Try as you might, you just can't seem to unscrew it. There's some tricks for removing stuck hole saws, but it's a lot easier if they don't get stuck in the first place. The reason they get stuck is that the process of drilling actually screws them down onto the collar even tighter. The solution is to use one of these types of mandrels, which are called quick change or quick release or something similar. I'll stick with quick release for now. Here's how they work. Hole saws one and a quarter inch or larger in diameter have two or four additional holes in the bottom arranged around the threaded hole. A quick release mandrel has two posts on a platform that slides up and down. The posts go into the holes and keep the saw from screwing down any further. I'll demo this using this Milwaukee mandrel. Make sure the platform is pulled out of the way, then screw the saw down onto the collar until it just starts to get some resistance. Don't over tighten it, that just defeats the purpose. Now slide the platform up and see if the posts line up with the holes, which they usually don't. So start unscrewing the saw until the holes line up, then slide the posts into the holes. Then hand tighten this big nut to secure everything. You don't have to tighten it down really tight, just enough so things don't move. There's a rubber o-ring that does a great job of not letting the nut loosen by itself. This Milwaukee mandrel holds the saw solidly. There's no play. So, with a quick release mandrel, the hole saw is not tightened all the way down on the collar's threads. It's the posts on the platform that keep it from spinning. This means the process of drilling won't tighten down the saw further, so it won't get stuck. I also bought this DeWalt mandrel, which is spring-loaded. Seemed like a good idea. However, sometimes this mandrel leaves the saw with too much play for my liking. So I'll stick with the Milwaukee mandrel, which really feels like a quality piece of manufacturing. When you're done drilling, just reverse the process. Unscrew the big nut, pull the platform down, and unscrew the hole saw. Simple as that. As I said, highly recommended. You can only use quick release mandrels with hole saws one and a quarter inches or more in diameter. They're the ones with the larger threaded hole, and they're also the only ones with post holes. If you want to use the smaller diameter hole saws, you'll need a second, non-quick release mandrel. For me, I use Forstner bits for the smaller holes, so it's not an issue. Well, that's it. If you want to rewatch a specific chapter, there's an index in the description below. Check out the description for links to products seen in this video. Just scroll down, click Show More, and scroll down until you see the links. And if you like what I do here, click that subscribe button, and don't forget to ring that bell to get notified about new videos. Thanks!